Hi guys, Keith Arkberg Farms. Uh, it's Saturday, just got back from running market deliveries and uh, decided to stop by a uh, hardware store for stuff real quick. Uh, but here's the new addition to the farm. My wife picked this up. Well, I went and picked it up, my wife bought it. John Deere 111. No mower deck, no nothing. Nice little farm cart. Works great. 1981, still going strong. But right now the uh, summer production has been going decent. Um, not the best in the world. It's actually been down quite a bit because of the heat. We've been getting, like over here, some spotty germination. I got my multi-plugs going good. I've got a bunch more cucumbers planted out. Hopefully we'll get a harvest off those. And bed of spinach and then spinach transplanted plugs next to the cucumbers. But here is what we went and picked up earlier. From the title, you probably know what I'm going to do with that. What's chain link top rail? One and three eighths? I'm going to build me a new greenhouse. Well, caterpillar tunnel, so. All right, let me show you. So to start this project, I got one of the bows off my quick caterpillar tunnel. I made this out of a bunch of uh, basically small cut off pieces of top rail that I picked up online cheaply. And I hooked them together with connectors and one tech screw. The one thing I did learn is that one tech screw is not enough in the windy areas because they start to back themselves back out. You need to get at least two in each connection all the way around. But for now, I'm going to take out this one section and use it as a layout guide. Well, maybe I'll use two. But yeah, to make a layout guide to kind of figure out how I'm going to build this tunnel. Because I've already got my tube bender. I want to make sure I can use it. Okay, so I went inside, changed my shirt, because for some reason, this top rail I just picked up is extremely greasy and i'm not sure why but the other stuff i've always picked up has been just fine but i don't know if it's just for shipping purposes but there's just grease all over it so that's what the uh hoops are gonna be made out of i'm gonna bend them and to make an a-frame uh, gothic style looking caterpillar tunnel kind of like the one through the trees right there you can kind of see i've showed you how to make that one before i bought these uh connectors online they're uh Carport connectors, the top ones that go up on the top of it. I think they're 120 degree arc from here to here. And then they also got end pieces as well. So the plan is, have that be the greenhouse, go down, curve on both ends, kind of like the other Caterpillar tunnel, and then uh, six foot in between bows, drive uh, number five, which would be five eighths uh, rebar into the ground, bearing plate washer with a carabiner on it and then rope back and forth wiggle wire track on both end walls for the top and then I might build out an end wall or I might use a scissor door technique I've been kind of looking into I'm not 100% sure on that but for now I'm just trying to get the main layout it's going to be let's see 20 foot across that will cover four beds and should end up about eight foot tall. The piece of poly I bought is 75 feet long. So that'll do my 42 foot tunnels, probably what I'll end up with. And then it is 28 wide. So that'll give me 14 foot each side to play with. So I figure a uh, 10 foot piece top rail and then put the bend in that one and then add another four foot piece in to receive into here. So, that's the plan. Now it's time to lay it out and see how it's actually going to work. So here's what I came up with. Since I've got a 28 foot wide piece of plastic, 
that I'll stretch across the outside. I got my connectors in the middle, which are my carport connectors. Then I want to go 20 feet across from here to here. And that gives me five beds through here on a four foot center. And then right here at this point is my first walkway inside and it's five and a half foot tall. It looks shorter and squattier than that, but that's just kind of looks are a little deceiving because we're in such a big open space. But the whole idea with this is, is that this is just the top of a permanent greenhouse, high tunnel, whatever you want to call it. So for now, I only have five and a half foot right here and it's even more squished over here because I can make it bend with my tube bender to get that curve. And then later I can also add a brace across if I'd like. But when I pick it up, I'll have to get some more plastic for the sidewalls. And I can make this height, whatever I want over here. I can put in four foot poles theoretically, and just buy four foot of plastic and put a hip board all the way across the tunnel here, going back and forth, wiggle lock, wiggle wire and channel lock, and lock in the top of this, which is already existing with my side post and another piece of four foot plastic and then put roll up sides on both sides. So it gives me a lot of options. It's a little flatter than I'd like, but we really don't have all that much snow around here. I mean, if you get more than six inches at a time, I'd be worried about it, but we've only had probably two or three snow events in the last 10 or 15 years that have had more than six inches of snow at once. And I know I say that, and then guess what will happen? It'll snow a foot, and that thing will collapse on me. But, that's besides the point. We are going to go with this design, because this is what I have right now. And it's going to be built as a Caterpillar de uh, design, with a solid ridge pole, because of my connectors, and rebar stakes, and the rope going back and forth, and yeah, we'll see. We'll get it going. And I just want to show you the links I go to to get in a shot. I'm up on top of... Uh, uh, six, eight foot ladder, I don't know. So I'm over here at my two bender slash swing set. Where are they? Oh no, over here. Swing set slash clothesline. And I've got my bender I've been using before that I made. Two foot wide from point to point. It's up one and a half inches for its arc, which I just put a nail here, put a nail here, took a piece of straight stock, pushed it up one and a half inches, and then drew my line. That's how I made that. And then I grooved down the middle of it with a router, and then put some boards to hold the uh, stock in place. Uh, from what my estimates are, I'm gonna need to put my bend at about five foot from the end. So that end, I'll start and then go down to five foot. At first, I'm going to do four foot. I'm going to check it. And I'm going to do four and a half foot and check it and keep going until I get the correct bin because I don't exactly know. So it's just going to be trial and error until I get it done. I want to use my straight end because the wedged end is going to be up in the flat part and I'll add another piece of stock to go up to the peak. At the start, I just take it down to the end of my jig, and just pull down. And replace the screws. Hold on, we'll be right back. Okay, got it reinforced. Put some more screws in it. I'll hold it for now. Going back to my first bend again. All the way out to the end of the jig. Keep it straight and down all the way to the end, right there. Now, I take this piece and go back in to the end. Basically, I took this and brought it back to here. And now I'm going to keep the curve straight and bend again. All the way down to the bottom. Keep my eyeball on it again. Take 
it back down to the board, keep it straight, and I'm only wanting to go to, there's my four and a half foot mark, there's my four foot mark. So I'm just going to bend it just a little bit further. Right there. Now I'm going to go check it and see what it looks like. Now to ensure all my bends are consistent, I laid my first bend on a piece of plywood, which happens to be one of my templates for burning row cover and drew it out so we go from into pull at the very corner up to the top right here which is our five foot mark which is the end of our bin if I get it close on all my bins like this the tunnel should be extremely consistent as we go down all right you gotta check this out going up to my five foot mark I stopped a little before so I took it back over there and bent it all the way up to that mark. Out straight from here, it's just perfectly straight on. Now, since I've got my swedge dinned up, I knew I was going to have to add a piece in here to get up to my peak. Since I've already got this loaded inside of my fitting, I can just come down here and make a mark on the tube below, and that'll give me my length for my extra pieces for the peak so we'll go ahead and do that we're gonna make our mark right at the swedge and come back here to know how far it was in the tube now we'll take it over make our cut off for that piece and get our length now my final number for my top expansion piece is two feet ten inches since I've got a cut, let's see, eight for each side, 16 in total, I put a metal cutting chop blade on my chop saw. A little seven and a quarter chop saw, really nice for a little small stuff like this. But this will make it a lot easier. I could use a uh, sawzaw, reciprocating saw, what have you, with a uh, metal blade on it. But like I said, since I'm cutting so many, I'm going with this. Here we go. Now we're going to cut this off at 2 feet 10 inches. There we go. 15 more to go. So now that I have all my calculations for where my bend is up the side, up here so I'm gonna bend up to five foot on my tube bender then I drove a stake here and then one down here at this other end at 20 foot so that's the width of my tunnel I cut off my off cut pieces here the extension of the top I did those at two foot ten inches I also went from where it meets the swedge up to where it meets the top piece and marked two foot six on both sides. From there, I pushed everything together, brought my peak piece in, and then drove another stake right here in the dead center, like that. Now that way, I can cut all my pieces out, bend all my sides, and then just line them up with the stake, the stake, and then the top piece here in the middle, Pull my swedge pieces together then I can drive two tech screws in each of these joints all the way around so I'll have one in the side and one in the bottom do not put them in the top because they'll tear the plastic you kind of want to go in at 45 and then go in up from the bottom here same thing here sideways and up from the bottom then when I go and actually start to connect these across the top I'll find out what this measurement is for my six foot bow spacing and I'll drive one from this angle and then back over from this angle to connect those together so I'm going to start producing these now that I have everything set up and uh, getting them screwed together. Next thing, we'll be standing one up. So I'm getting ready to uh, start putting this cat tunnel up. I'm using uh, my cat tunnel clips, Jeremy Garcia made these for me. Just a bearing plate washer, 5 8 hole, carabiner. Drop it over your piece of rebar, put your pipe on top, 
cord in there for the cat clip. But we are going to take over plot three. So plot three was the uh, first large plot I actually built on this property when we started. And now I'm going to cover it with a tunnel and it's never going to see the light of rain again. Well, at least right now anyways. But what I did was uh, went through and pulled a tape, put flags down every six foot, pulled the tape across. Well, actually, I went from that way to this way. Measured off 20 feet. Same thing down at the air side. There's flags every six foot. All this fencing that I have up, it's just wind fencing. And I've got it tied to all the uh, T-posts so it actually stays in place. I'm going to actually remove all of this and the reason for that is because it's going to be in the way. So down here at this end I laid landscape fabric across. That way I won't have to worry about mowing right next to the tunnel. It'll actually keep the grass back away. The tunnel will start right in here somewhere right about this middle line. And then uh, that whole fence over there will go away because that'll be the side of the tunnel. Uh, for the time being I'll keep the overhead irrigation in there. And over there and I'll just move those ones there actually into the tunnel itself same thing with the one behind me which is right down here I'll move that into the tunnel as well but I'm going to uh, start driving some rebar and getting this thing going and drop at least two bows in cut the piece in between and uh, start working my way down So for this cat tunnel, I've got about 30, somewhere 36, bunch of old scrap rebar. They're all number five, which is five eighths, which happen to match with my bearing plate washers, depending on where you live in the country, what you have readily available at your home stores. Otherwise, you have to go to a construction supply yard to get different sizes of rebar. But they sell these bearing washers in half inch round holes or five eighths. So just get the ones that you need specifically for where you're at in the country and what's available to you. So, basically what I'm gonna do is just take this, pull my flag, put it right where I want it. I'm gonna drive it directly through my landscape fabric. I'm gonna drive this down. At least halfway, if not a little further. I'm trying to get down to the clay. We've got about 24, inches or so of top soil here but I want to leave at least eight inches out of the ground where I'm at nine right now so now the clip goes over the top just like that make sure that your uh, carabiners towards the outside and then I'll go through and start driving them and get ready to bring in one of my hoops uh, the one of the big bows and start setting those up Now for the tricky part, you drag a bow in there, set it up on the rebar pins, get it vertical by myself. Take the next one, do the same thing.
There we go. One thing I need to make sure is to drive my rebar pins a little bit more at an angle. Just because the way my curve ended up at the bottom. Better than that. Yeah, good. We're going to go cut the uh, uh, top ridge piece. Get those two connected together. I can just work my way all the way down. Now, it's been about three or four days since I put this up. I haven't had time to really get back to it. Uh, weather hasn't been that good and I've been awful busy. Um, top bar up there that connects in between the connectors. This very end bow. Each of these are one and three eighths. So roughly one and a half comes off of each uh, measurement. So we take three quarters off of half of this and one and a half over there, which is one and a quarter off of six foot for that first piece. The next one be pretty easy. We'll go from this bow to the next bow. We need to go back this way and kind of look at it. So we lose one and a half and we lose the other half of that one and a half. So we lose three quarters or three quarters. So we lose one and a half off of six foot. So that'll be our measurement. We'll go six foot minus one and a half and we'll continue that all the way down until we get to the end. And our very last bow, we will take a measurement from the top of the ridge pole all the way across down to the end. And that'll be our final cut on that end piece. We'll just determine that when it happens. It sometimes is a little over, sometimes a little under. I like to try to keep it, you know, same as this one on this end, but sometimes, you know, things happen, things move, things shift. That gives us our adjustment to actually make it to where it's actually 42 feet from end to end. Now, the one thing I'm still waiting for is uh, channel lock and wiggle wire. I've got it shipped right now. It should be here hopefully in maybe a week or so. And that'll go all the way along these outside bows. I'll also take a piece down here across the bottom and go from bow to bow. This fence will be out of here. I'll also have uh, landscape fabric all the way down, just like over here on this other side. So we'll keep all the weeds out, just like here. All the flags are where all the rebar will be driven and where the posts will go. We'll also install diagonal bracing from down there up to here and put the plastic on. But we'll have to do that next time because this video is getting a little long and I need to get it out there. So, hope you all like what we saw today. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you all. Have a good day.